Hey guys, welcome back to Planet J Judah, and today I'm going to show you how I did this headscarf. Now I'm sure there are plenty of tutorials out there. I did not follow one, I just did this one on my own, so that's why I'm able to show you exactly how I did it. And I am going to be using Red Heart Super Saver Ombre in the colorway Hot Sauce. Hot Sauce. I think that's really pretty and very autumnal because <laughs> we're getting into the fall season. Oh, there we go. Let's get it. Let's get it right. Anyways, um, I figured I would use this. I haven't used it before. Well, this color. Of course, I've used Red Heart because that's pretty much everything I have is Red Heart. That, besides the point, <laughs> the basic construction is creating that triangle and which is what you see here and mine is roughly 14 inches from here to here um everybody's is going to be different depending on who you're making it for whether it's you or somebody else my rule of thumb is to get the two ends of the of the triangle to sit comfortably behind your ear and for me, that's roughly 14 inches. And for this one, it is 10 rows deep. So there again, for you, that's gonna be something different. Wherever you like to have it set on the back of your head. I like it, sorry if that, if I, anyways, I like it a little lower. So I want it to cover pretty much most of my head. And some people don't. Some people actually want it shorter. Some people want it longer. And so yeah, yours is going to be customized to fit you. I am just going to show you the basics of what I did to create mine. And let's, um, let's talk hook. So for this one, which I used for the Red Heart Super Saver uh, Granny All-in-One Square that I did my bucket hat with, um, I'm gonna because I'm using another Red Heart Super Saver. It's the same thickness as far as weight. It's a uh, worsted uh, number four. They suggest if I um they suggest a 5.5 millimeter, uh, which is actually what am I using a 5.5 or am I using a 6.5? I can't read. I think it's a 6.5. Yeah, 6.5 millimeter hook. So I'm I'm actually using a one size hook larger, just because if I use the 5.5 or any smaller, it would be kind of tight and not want to um, lay nicely. So I opted for the bigger hook. So without further ado, let's go ahead, get started working on our headscarf. And actually I'm really excited because I can't wait to see how this color works up. All right, so to simply get started, we are going to simply create a slip knot and then chain two. And I try to do that first chain a little bit looser because I always, I always do it too tight and it's hard for me to pull the hook through, but we're going to chain two and then go back into that first chain <laughs> and then going back into the first chain with a double stacked single crochet because we all know I love the double stacked single crochet, which is simply doing a single crochet and then going in that first loop away, second loop away from your hook. So there's that first one and then here's that second one, front bar, I guess. And we're gonna go into that second one and create our second single crochet. And that is our first double crochet of this round. And we're going to start it like any granny um, 
headscarf, but we're not doing a granny headscarf. We're doing a solid headscarf. <laughs> oh my goodness, my brain. All right, so now we are going to do two more double, or two double crochets, not two more, because we haven't done one yet. So there's one, two. Now on the one that I am wearing, I did a uh, chain two, but I think I wanna try chaining one instead. So in between your clusters or in between the corners, I'm going to chain one and then I'm going to do three more double crochets. Whoop. This first row is always the hardest. That's two. And three. Whoop, come on. There we go. We're going to tighten that up. And this is our first row starting our triangle. So now what we are going to do is instead of chaining, we all know again, I love my double stacked single crochet. I'm simply going to turn my work and then go into that first stitch with a double stacked single crochet. So there's the first stack and the second. And now I'm going to do a double crochet in that same stitch. So now I'm going to double crochet into the next two stitches. And now we have reached our corner, so I'm going to double crochet I'm going to place two double crochets into that chain one space. One, two, and because I need to make it a corner, I'm going to chain one and then repeat two more double crochets. Woo, I'm getting a little flimsy here. All right, so now we have our first side done. Now we need to complete our second side. We're going to double crochet into each of the stitches. I should have marked, which I, it's right there. So I have one, and two, come on, you're being finicky, there we go, is that right, that was weird. I almost skipped one. There we go. You need to make sure you have all three of your double crochets. So I need to double crochet into the next two stitches. There we go. And then I will do two double crochets into that last stitch. There we go. Now I'm cooking with gas, maybe. Come on, pull through. Would you just pull through? Jeez, please. There's one. Uh, 
Oh my goodness, it wants to keep catching on it. All right, there's two. So now we have finished our first row and we're gonna just keep repeating the process until we get done. As I said on mine, I did 10 rows, so I'm gonna see if it'll be the same, but we're simply going to turn our work, do a single stacked, double cro a double stacked single crochet into that top stitch. Or that first stitch. Then we are going to double crochet into that same stitch, creating our increase. Then we will double crochet all the way up to the side, all the way up the side to the the corner or the sing, uh, single crochet chain one space. My goodness. So we are increasing each row by eight total, having four on each side. So there was our first two. Now we're doing our double crochets up to the chain one space. Okay, we've got one more. And now in that chain one space, we are gonna double crochet two double crochets. Chain one. And do two more double crochets. Creating our corner. Then we need to move it a little so that we don't lose that first one and do, sing, uh, do double crochets all the way back down, doing an increase at the very last stitch. And now we have completed three rows. I'm gonna go ahead and continue and go all the way to row 10 and see if that's where I like it. And then I will bring you back and we'll continue on.
Okay, so just to give you some information, by doing the increase here at the edge and then also here in the corner, that increases or that widens and then lengthens the headscarf. So the two on the edge here widen the headscarf, whereas the two here, or I should say four, because there's technically four right here, it lengthens the headscarf. Alrighty, so I have completed 10 rows. It's roughly 13, almost 14, no, I think it's 12 inches, but um, I have not added the border yet. So once I add the border, it'll widen <laughs> and, and lengthen. Uh, right now, you can fasten off and change to a whole different, whole different color. I am so tongue-tied. Uh, but I'm going to continue on using the hot sauce. I think that's what it's called. Yeah, hot sauce. Because as you can see, we are just barely getting into the ombre color change. So I want to continue that and I'm going to... Uh, get started on the border. Now you can also do any border that you want. I am just going to show you the one that this has, which is a Pico. And yeah, we'll go and start the border. All right. So as I have finished, let me get myself back into here. No, yep, here we go. There we go. Let me put things in the right place. There. As I finish this row, I'm going to turn my work and slip stitch into that first stitch. Because when I did the, the one that I'm wearing, I did a um, standing single crochet and then did the pico and I just didn't like the way that it looked so I did it this way and I changed it and did it this way instead. See? And then now in that next stitch I'm going to do a single crochet and then chain two and then I'm going to go back in. Normally with a pico you go into that first bar. Well I'm going to go back into that stitch with a slip stitch Oops. Come on. Get in there. Boy. And then I'm going to slip stitch into the next stitch. And I'm going to continue on down the line doing every other with a pico and a slip stitch. Now as I come up to my chain one spot, I'm gonna just continue up. So I just did a pico, I'm gonna do a slip stitch, then a pico, and depending on how you end on yours, it could be the pico or not. Um, oops. I need to do that as a slip stitch right there. Oh, come on. So whatever you end with right here, I'm going to do the next, uh, the next thing into that chain one space. So I just did a pico. Now I'm going to do a slip stitch. And since I'm doing a slip stitch, I'm going to do 
a pico and another slip stitch in that same space. So now we're gonna do our, our single crochet. And then chain two. Slip stitch back down. Come on. There we go. And now so that I continue around the corner, I'm going to slip stitch again in the same space. A little difficult here. Just have a little patience. There we go. So now in that first uh, stitch, I'm going to do a pico. And then slip stitch. And then pico. And that is how your uh, tip should look and then you just continue going all the way down just as you are on this side and I will meet you when it's time to add the straps. Alrighty so this is how we're looking you should end up doing the same thing on this side where your last uh, stitch is a slip stitch into this last stitch and then we are simply going to start chaining 60 to create our straps. So I will go ahead and start that. And like I said, it's we're just simply chaining 60. All right, so I've chained my 60. I'm going to start going back down by going through the back loops of my stitch my chains i'm going to skip that first one and go directly into that second one and we're going to slip stitch all the way back down going through the back loops of our chain you don't have to go through the back loops i just think it looks nicer so that's why i do it but you just need to slip stitch back down to the to this part of your head scarf. Oh my goodness. Alrighty. Now that I have slip stitched through all of my chains, I need to slip stitch back into the head scarf to go on to the next step. So I'm going to locate that first place that I need to actually you can just find wherever you feel like it's going to go well. I'm going to slip stitch back into the scarf so that now makes it attached fully and now we're going to simply single crochet all the way to the, to the other end. And the way I like to do it is I find, let me see. I'm going to single crochet right here I mean, you just kind of single crochet wherever it fits best. Okay. So that's kind of like the, the middle. And then this is the double crochet right here. There is two holes. So I go into one hole for my first single crochet and then into the next hole of that double crochet. And then I go into the hole that's in between rows. And I just work my way all the way across to the other side.
All right, so I've worked my single crochets all the way across, and now I'm gonna start doing chains again, and I'm again going to do 60 chains. I've completed my 60 chains, and again, I'm gonna go back down doing slip stitches into the back bumps, back down to the headscarf. So I've slip stitched all the way through all of my chains and I just wanted to show you, you can see how it's not fully attached to the headscarf, whereas this one is fully attached. So now we're going to slip stitch back into the headscarf to finish off the strap. Gonna just go right in here. Okay, now I'm back onto the headscarf. I'm gonna fasten off. Tighten that up a little bit. Cut my yarn. And now all that's left is to weave in our ends. Alrighty, here we go. Isn't that pretty? I love how it came out. And because we used the 6.5 millimeter hook, it's not as, it's stiff, but not as stiff as it would be if we used the 5.5. And so that way it lays on your head a lot nicer. It doesn't stand out very much, but I think it came out just beautiful. I love how the uh, ombre created this kind of as if it, it was a natural border. So I love it and I will put it on. But yeah, I absolutely love it. Be right back. All right, there you have it. Now, I would say this one is just a little bit smaller than my than this one, but that could be because I did single um, chains, or yeah, I did one chain for the corner instead of two chains for the corner. I don't know. I could have done an, another row, but I chose not to. I thought this was perfectly fine. So it is a little bit smaller, but that's okay. I absolutely love it. I think it's so pretty. Hopefully you heard that. I think it's so pretty. Um, and I look forward to wearing it this fall. And actually I'll probably wear it year round. It won't matter because I love it. Anyways, I hope you've enjoyed today's video, and if you did, I would love it if you would hit the like button. Leave me a comment. Are you going to make one? And if so, what color are you going to choose? Oh, and by the way, you can totally do every other row a different color. I mean, the world is our palm tree. Or so I've been told. So whatever you see fit, however you see fit doing it, customize it, make it your own. Do a different border. I mean, whatever you like to do. I just showed you how I did this one. And yeah, if you'd like to be notified of any, all, any and all future uploads, hit the subscribe button and don't forget to click all on the notification bell. And with that, remember, gravity works, guys. <laughs>